All right, guys, so now we're going to look at some tags that have to do with typography. Some of the stuff we already looked at, like, like the H1 tag, which is a heading tag. We'll look at some of the other headings and also paragraph and uh, the strong tag and stuff like that. So let's create a new file here called 04 underscore uh, typography dot HTML. And I'm going to show you some other stuff as well, some little tips and tricks um, when it comes to VS Code. So let's put in our, our boilerplate, which is, uh, we'll do exclamation tab, and that puts in all of our, our structure here. And for the title, let's change this, we'll just say like headings, paragraphs, typography, oops. Okay, and then we're going to go down to the body here. And I'm going to put a comment. Now, if you want to just put a, a comment, like an empty comment, you can just do control and then the question mark or the, the forward slash key, and that will put in an empty comment. It might be com command and that key on a Mac. I'm not sure because on my Mac, I actually switch the control and the command keys. So when I say control, it might, it might be command on a Mac. I'm not sure. Um, so let's go ahead and just put in headings here. And another tip, if you want to go to the next line, obviously you can go to the end here and you can hit enter, but if you're in the middle here and you hit enter, it'll do that. If you want to have a, a clear new line and you're in the middle, you can hold down control or again, might be command and then enter and it'll create a new line. No matter where you are here, it'll create a new line if you hold down control. Okay, so keep that in mind. And I'm going to give you these little tips throughout the course because I, I think that it really helps you um, write your code in a more efficient way and, and in a much faster way. All right, so let's, let's put some headings in here. So H1, I'm just going to say heading 1, and I'll hold Control and Enter to go to the next line. Let's do H2, tab, heading 2, oops, H3. Four. What else? We got a heading five. It goes up to six. So H six, heading six. All right. So let's save this and let's open this up with Live Server. I might have to close some of your other tabs. And this is what it's going to look like. So this is H one. It's going to be the largest, and then it goes smaller and smaller, and then H six is going to be the smallest. Now you can change the font size through CSS. You can do whatever you want through CSS, but by default, H1 is going to be the largest. Um, now, a little tip or, or some advice that I would give is is you usually only want to have an H1 H1 per page because the search engines actually look at this and um, you want to have like you want to describe whatever the content is. For instance, if it's a blog post, you want to have your your blog post title. Um, in the H1, okay, and you can have, I mean, you can have multiple H1s, but it's good practice to just have one per page, um, and then these other ones, you can have as many as, as you want, say you have a roll of blog posts, maybe you have an H3 for each title, okay, so, I mean, it's not, you know, mandatory, but I would suggest using one H1 per page if possible, so those are headings, let's go ahead and look at uh, paragraphs, We've already done this, but it's just a P tag. Now, I'm going to give you another tip here. With Emmet, we can generate some dummy text. If you need just some text to kind of fill, you know, as a placeholder, you can do lorem, L-O-R-E-M, and then hit tab, and it'll give you uh, a paragraph of dummy text or filler text. And if you want to specify uh, a certain number of words, like let's say we want a 10-word sentence, or paragraph, we could do lorem 10 tab, and it'll give us 10 words. Okay, we could even do like lorem 500, and it'll give us 500 words. I'm going to do, let's say, 100, and just generate some text. And if I save this, and we go and we take a look, you'll see that we have this paragraph of 100 words. Now, inside the paragraph, I'm going to add, we'll just go anywhere, it doesn't really matter, and I'm going to put in a strong tag. Okay. Now with VS Code, once I put the beginning tag in, it adds the ending one automatically. So I'm just going to just uh, 
cut that out and put that over here and then anything that's within here is within the strong tag so let's save this and go back and notice that it's bolded okay so by default it'll be bold but with css you could change the styling of this strong tag to be a different color or to be bigger uh, bigger font whatever you want to do with it but it's it's made to make it stand out and at the same time you have the emphasis tag which is the em so let's say em and i'm going to just put the ending tag let's say down here and if we save that we take a look by default it's going to be italic it's actually this right here okay so you can see that the text is italic which again you can change within css and we're going to get into css in the next section so that's strong and emphasis um, we also have the line break, which I showed you in one of the slides. It's one of the self-closing tags. So let's say um, we want a space right here without adding a new paragraph. If I just do this and save, it's not going to reflect that in the browser. Okay, this is only in the editor. I can put a, a million spaces here and save, and it doesn't show in the browser. To actually have a line break without adding a new paragraph you would add in a, a BR tag. So I'm going to go right here and put in a BR tag. So what that's going to do is it's going to knock this onto the next line in the browser, as you can see right here. If I wanted it to go down again, I could add in another BR tag. I'm just going to put a uh, comment here. Okay, so if we have two line breaks, you'll see that it pushes it down again, and I can push it down as much as I want. And since it's a self-closing tag, you could either do this format or you could do that. So both of these are going to work, as you can see. Um, I tend to use this, just the HTML5, uh, but sometimes I use a, a Visual Studio Code extension called Prettier, which will auto-format your code and it adds the slash automatically. So if you've watched some of my other videos and I have the slash, that's because I'm using Prettier. And I might introduce that extension to you guys later. Now, in addition to the BR tag, we have an HR tag, which is a horizontal rule. I'm actually gonna put that, let's see, we'll go right here. And let's say horizontal rule. And what this does the HR tag is it, it it does a line break but it also creates an actual line so if we check this out you can see it put a line across the screen okay so that's a horizontal rule now if you've studied HTML before uh, especially if it was a while ago before HTML5 you might have seen tags like the bold tag so if we put a B here um, you might have seen st stuff like this so if we actually take a look at this in Chrome, um, you'll see that it actually is bold, but this, the bold tag along with the I tag for italics and stuff like that, the U tag for underline, it's all been deprecated because HTML is not meant for styling. Um, and the strong tag replaced the bold tag because the strong tag is a semantic tag. It doesn't necessarily mean it's bold. It just means that it should stand out in some way, but we leave it up to the CSS to, to say what that way is, even though it bolds by default. Uh, and, and that's kind of hard to understand. It did confuse me in the beginning when HTML5 came out, but just know that we don't really use this anymore or the U or I think there was S for strike through. Although we do have a semantic tag for deleted text, which does by default add a strike through. So let's say we do Dell and we're going to wrap this text right here. So this is actually a semantic tag. So we'll save this and take a look and notice that it does add a strike through. Okay, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be strike through. Um, we can change that in the CSS if we want. Maybe we want it to be highlighted with a, a yellow background or something like that. It doesn't necessarily mean strike through like the S tag did. They took that out of HTML5 or deprecated it. All right, so in the next video, we're going to take a look at links, hyperlinks, and we're going to also look at embedding images into a web page.